Hello everyone, Jeremy here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Blacklight Retribution for the PlayStation 4. You know, Blacklight Retribution is one of the first games to come out for the PlayStation 4, and it was one of the first free-to-play games to come out for the console as well. But just like Warframe, another free-to-play game, this game was in beta for a very long time. But as of today, June 24th, the beta is over and Blacklight Retribution has received a significant update to bring it more on par with the PC version. And now this is the full version for the PlayStation 4. The beta tag is gone. And, you know, when I first started playing this, I didn't play a whole lot of it. I gave it a shot, played a few times, and then I just kind of stopped because something about the game just, it put me off. And I can't quite like, explain why. But over the past few days, I've been giving it more of a more of a try, and I'm actually starting to quite enjoy it. So, if you've got a PlayStation 4, you like competitive first-person shooters, and maybe you heard about this, you want to see what it's all about, that's what this video is for. I'm going to be doing a lot of explaining about some of the systems that have gotten me confused in the past, and I hope that uh, I can maybe help you out so that you can understand it better as well. So, first things first, Marketplace. This is a free-to-play game, which means you don't have to pay for anything if you don't want to, but there are plenty of things for you to buy if you want to spend the money on them. So here's the thing, uh, inside of the Marketplace, here are some featured items that the developer Zombie Studios would like for you to take a good look at to decide whether or not you want to buy them. And there's two different types of currency that this game offers. There are Z coins, which is the premium currency that you can only buy with real money. And then there are GP, which I believe stands for game points, which is the non-premium in-game currency that you earn just by playing the game and doing well and, you know, just participating. You get that. You don't have to pay for those at all. So let's look at some of the prices for some of the Z coin packs that you get. So if I wanted to buy myself 500 Z coins, it goes to the PlayStation Store and that costs about five bucks. And 1000 Z coins plus 100 extra, that's 10, that's 10 bucks. And you use these to purchase weapons, weapon parts, customization items for your character like helmets and chest protection and leg protection and trinkets that you put on your gun like these things here that give you a little bit of a stamina boost there's absolutely no shortage of things that you can buy in this game at all and you can buy all of it with the premium currency with the z coins however you don't necessarily have to do that if you don't want to you can use the GP, the game points, to buy things permanently, but, but, you can't do that right off the bat. If you want to use the in-game currency that you just earned from playing the game, and you want to buy things permanently, you have to buy the Blacklight Prime membership, which is 500 Z coins, which is like the equivalent of about five bucks. So for five dollars, you can unlock a permanent price options for your game points. When you think about it, it's not too unreasonable of, of a thing to ask for. After all, these games are expensive to make and the developers have to make money somehow. Uh, so if you are a PlayStation Plus member, you will get 250 Z coins for free just for being a PlayStation Plus member. So if you wanted to unlock things with GP, all you would have to do is put in an additional $2.50 and then you'll be good to go. But that's something I think that you should be aware of because if you choose not to do that, then the only way that you can get new items and things is by renting them. Let me show you that now. Let's go into the customization menu and here are all of the things that you can get to customize your guy and your weapon or your gal. Uh, here's your primary weapon slot, a skin that you can put on your weapon, a camouflage if you want to, and then you can break down different parts of your weapon according to its muzzle, its scope, stock, mag, barrel, and a tag which is a little like it says there. It's a little trinket that gives you a little bit of a stack boost. So let's just say I wanted to change the muzzle of my weapon 
look at all of these different muzzle options that I can choose from. You can rotate the gun around, get a better look at all of the different muzzles that you can put on your gun and also take a look at the right corner of the screen that's showing you all these different stats that's coming up and that this is one of the things that really makes blacklight retribution unique in its own way is that there are so many stats associated with every little part that you put on your weapon and it really encourages you to make the best weapon that you possibly can manage to think of so if I wanted to put this briar dampening muzzle on my gun, we can see that it lowers my recoil a bit, but at the same time, it impairs the damage of my weapon. Or if I wanted the Vulcan power break, you can see that it significantly improves my damage, which goes from 50 to 52, but it impairs my range and the range goes down and it also impairs the spread and it impairs the recoil and really all that you have to do is just look at these different stats and of course if it's green it means hey you're doing good this is actually better but you know if you take this weapon for example or this this particular uh, muzzle for example it does good things for the aim it does good things for uh, shooting from the hip and movement speed and recoil but it lowers the damage just slightly just slightly it lowers the damage and it's not really that big of a deal so if I wanted to use this this particular muzzle I can buy it for 75 of the Z coins which will be permanent I'll be able to keep it forever or I can rent it for a day for 10 Z coins but if I just want to use the in-game currency I can rent it for one day using the game points that I already have so I'm gonna say okay I'm just gonna rent it for a day I'll hit accept and it automatically equips and I'll have this for 24 hours and after 24 hours it'll just go away now that leaves me with 1375 GP left and I know that some people have been upset that you have to rent well you have the option of renting different weapons and renting different attachments instead of just outright buying them but in my experience I've seen that at least in the very beginning of the game you can earn GP pretty easily uh, like for example if I wanted to rent uh, like one of these submachine guns I can rent this for a day for uh, 200 and 50 uh, GP but you know that really is like the equivalent of two matches you can get over a hundred and twenty five to hundred and fifty GP easily just by doing a single match so I like to think of it as you play a couple of matches and then if you have absolutely no GP you play a couple of matches you come back and then you can rent this for a day and there's no commitment, you don't have to keep it if you're like, well, I just want to sort of try it out and now I want to move on to another weapon, you can just move on to another weapon. But at the same time, they are locked by level if you are going to be using your GP for them. So right now, since I'm under level 5, these are the only primary weapons that I have access to. I can buy the submachine gun for 5,000 GP, you know, if I want. And I already have the Burst Fire SMG, so that is not a problem for me. I'm just going to stick with the primary weapon. And as for your person, you can also customize them. Give them different helmets. Give them different body armor and leg armor. Now these helmets, it only seems like you can buy these helmets with, with the premium currency, which is a bit of a drag. I wish that you can at least rent these with the non-premium currency, but it doesn't appear to, uh, that option doesn't appear to be there. Uh, however, when it comes to the upper body, you do have that option. And just like the weapons, you have different stats associated with each and every piece of armor that you want to put on your guy. So if I wanted to use the Allied Warzone's Alpha X9, I think that says, you see that it gives me extra health. It goes from 200 to 250, but it lowers my stamina. It lowers my run speed, but I do get an additional gear slot. So that's good for me if I want to do that. And you really just customize this to your liking. Um, if you want a person that's pretty nimble and fast, but they will be weak, you can get some lighter armor. Or if you want a guy walking around like a tank, you can have more armor 
but you will move slower. It's really just up to you. So you can do the same thing with the leg armor. And then of course it's the camos and the skin, which are premium items that you will buy with real money and it will just make your character look different than all the others. So there you go. I know it can get, it looks a little bit complicated, but once you spend a little bit of time with it, um, you see that, okay, it's really not all that bad. Here's the gear. The gear are basically like grenades. If you want, there's different kind of grenades, EMP grenades, uh, digital grenades, which are pretty cool. Uh, you got combat knives, you got melee protection stuff, and of course, it's all locked behind your level, so you have to work your way up before you can unlock some of this stuff if you want to use the non-premium currency to get to it. And then the depot contains things like health refills and ammo refills, some really some uh, one use, one time use uh, kind of items. Okay, so let's actually play a game. Now that we've gone over all the monetization stuff. All right, so I'm just going to go to play game and I'm going to go to choose a playlist and I am just going to do regular old team deathmatch. So this is mostly a competitive game. But there are, there is a, there is a cooperative mode called Onslaught. And Onslaught is really kind of just a, it's like a zombie mode. There are these crazy demonic dogs and some wild crazy people who look like zombies. They'll run towards you, they'll try to, they'll try to maul your face off. And there's some other guys who have guns, other guys who have shields. And really all that you're doing is surviving wave after wave after wave of these people, uh, until you reach the end. And if you happen to be streaming this game on Twitch when you're doing the onslaught mode, then the people who are watching you, they can vote on different things that that will affect your gameplay. So if they wanted if they wanted you to become temporarily invincible, they can vote for that. If they wanted you to take more damage, they can vote for that too. It's all up to them. All right, so let's do some team deathmatch. And of course, just like every game that I seem to play, I'm always, I'm, if I'm not the first one to die, I always get killed before I kill someone. So anyway, so here's the thing about this game. Um, even though there's no map, you can hit R1. And when you do that, it brings up this little interface right here. And it basically, it sees through walls and it shows you exactly where everyone is for a limited period of time. And everybody has access to this. Every single person has access to this. So there's really nowhere to hide. I don't know if I killed that guy or not. Nope. There he goes. So there's really nowhere to hide because I know exactly where this guy is. They know exactly where I am at all times. And it really helps to to weed out people who might be camping, people who kind of just like to hang out in a corner or something and just never really show themselves, they just sort of hide. You don't have to worry about those people not ever being found because this thing sees through walls and it has a little recharge, but it really, really helps you out. All right, see where everyone is here. All right. So as far as uh, how it feels when you're uh, just a typical first person shooter, I can say that from the beta to the full game, one thing that I noticed that is much different is the way that aim assist works. I think that there was a pretty heavy aim assist during the beta, so much so that if you just put your reticle on someone, you were pretty much locked in and it made getting kills pretty easy. And of course it feels good when you're killing people easily, it makes you feel like, oh man, my aim is so great and I'm just doing so wonderful. Uh, but I think a lot of players started to complain about that. So in this update, they made big changes to the auto aim system. And to me it doesn't, or the assisted aim, and it does not feel as assisted <laughs> anymore. Uh, so it's going to require a little bit more skill to get your reticle on someone and keep it there to take them out. Ah, wasted that grenade. Oh well. Where is everybody? 
another big another change that they made to this um which I guess it really doesn't matter now but they really improved the menu system everything that showed you in that menu is completely different than it was in the beta and of course a lot of uh, changes to the weapon balances and things like that and what you just saw they kind of just warped there is some screen tearing in this even though it's the final version there is screen tearing in this and uh, it's because right now the frame rate is not locked I'm gonna go back to that I just wanted to show you this little terminal thing right here during the middle of a match you can just pop into here and you can get different uh, weapons and you can refill your health you can refill almost got me killed you can refill your armor and it's just taking from the CP the combat points I think that's what that stands for when you're playing the game it doesn't get deducted from your actual non-premium currency in the game it's, it's just taking from money that you earn while you're playing the game so you don't have to worry about buying uh, refilling your health or your ammo and then taking away from your reserves you don't have to worry about that because that's GP and this is CP so anyway you see I'm just kinda I'm warping like this now I think that this is because the frame rate is not locked and I think that there's some screen tearing and whatnot going on with this um, there is an option where am I going there is an option to lock the frame rate and uh, it, that is not on by default you have to go into the settings and turn and turn that off but that should help to get rid of some of the uh, that should help get rid of some of the, the screen tearing but as far as this warping goes I'm not entirely sure if that's just a wonky frame rate issue or if that's a, a server side thing but I just did want to point that out alright we got some more guys over here so it feels pretty good you know it's as far as a shooter goes is I think these days it's mm, kinda hard to not get left trigger right trigger you know shoot down uh, accurately let me see I got killed because things kinda got a little weird there the screen kinda warped a little bit and took me off my took me off my aim uh, that's a female character and I also want to point out that I think you don't have access to female characters by default. I think you have to buy them with like uh, 600 of the Z coins, which to me is n that's not cool. Um, I don't see any reason why you couldn't put uh, females in the game by default. You want to be a male or female. Why do you have to pay to be the female? Oh, let me see. What should I show you? What should I show you? All right, here's a hard suit. Hard suits, it's kind of like Titanfall. You call in the hard suit, it falls from the sky, you get in, and then you got these two awesome weapons that you've got access to. You can either use the, the uh, right trigger for a rail gun, which is like this, which will pretty much kill anything in one hit or the left tr oh where am i going or the uh, left trigger which is a rail gun or which is a a mini gun rather and these things are really these things are really strong but at the same time they're really slow but if you happen to come across some enemies like that guy just kind of ran away alright finally got him you come across someone like that who's feeling pretty ballsy and you can take them out no problem kinda of like how we did that person there uh, it seems like I'm getting caught up on stuff uh, okay let's run in here and you don't have access to the to that uh... the mode that lets you see through walls you can't do that in while you're inside this hard suit so you just have to kind of move around and hopefully you just fall into the middle of a big combat take him out that way but we killed one person in the hard suit I'm just glad I was able to show it to you so I came in third place 12 kills one assist seven deaths good stuff 
and yeah you got your dubstep going on all right so from here you see that I got my experience and I got 96 C uh, GP plus an additional I forget I don't know how much that was so you see I got hundred and forty GP just from playing that one match so I'm just gonna leave this because I'm not gonna continue the death match but hundred and forty GP from doing that one match so if I wanted to just go into not the marketplace but if I wanted to customize my guy like okay that went well and with that money that I'm going that I just got you know why not uh, switch up my secondary weapon if I wanted to you know get a shotgun rent a shotgun for a day for 210 or how about another revolver I'm not at that level but if I wanted it it would also cost 210 GP and just a couple of matches will give me enough to buy that and if you don't spend your GP every single time you get it then you will save it up and then you can just get numerous things you can make kind of like your dream loadout and kind of just have it for a day okay let's do another well no let's not do quick join uh, let's go back and this time we're going to do a quick onslaught this is the this is the cooperative zombie esque shooter mode This was a mode that was introduced on the PlayStation PlayStation 4 during the beta, and this is really one of the reasons why I kind of got back into this, because I wasn't really in the mood for competitive shooters at that time, and when I heard about this mode and zombies, cooperativeness, I don't have to worry about killing actual real people and trying to be better than them, alright, you know, I was all for it. So it got me back into black blacklight retribution but it didn't last you know it it, it, was, it was strange it just something about this just did not catch my interest until recently and I just I, I don't know why I found myself waiting up for the for the beta to end so I can finally start playing again all right so I am prepared dude I'm spastic we need you to get prepared as well my friend Along with this full version, or uh, three more maps were added to the onslaught mode, and three more maps were added to the standard mode. So it was a lot going on with this. Uh, so yeah, of course we get the one guy. It's, there's always one. There's always one person in these lobbies that all you have to do is just say that you're ready, and then everyone will be ready. All right, good. It's always that one person that just waits. I don't know why. Alright, let's begin this game. Okay, now, one thing I want to point out about this is that uh, it's always dark, and in my opinion, I think it's a bit too dark. You'll see what I mean once it, the stuff starts to hit the fan. Where are the hostiles? Where are they coming from? Whoa, you see, they just kind of run up, they just kind of run up on you, and they're, uh, well, it looks like my team has got like a little strategy, they're just kind of funnel them in through this way. Someone hit, yeah, this guy's hitting me. There's just something weird, I think, about these zombie-like enemies that we're fighting. You know they're very they're, they're dark, so I can't really see them, and they just kind of flail about, and I don't know. It just makes it so that I can't. I, I feel like I can't really get a bead on them all that much. We can also find those little depots here and refill our ammo and health and stuff, but uh, I don't know where it is, and I'm kind of afraid to leave because I feel like my teammates know what they're doing. There's those dogs. Yeah, so if my my team seems to know what they're doing, so I don't want to. I don't want to stray too far from the pack. I think there's some ammo there. I'm not even trying to aim down the sights anymore. I just shoot from the hip, man. 
more dogs. You see, I'm pretty much... I am out of ammo. Alright, so... There's something going on over here, like some type of objective. Uh, let's, let me run over here, see what's going on. Capture the objective. Okay, so really, you just have to match the numbers. 97, 18, 76. Wait, what? What happened? Oh, shoot. Did I not do it right? Oh, no. I don't think I did it right. Now, these dudes are shooting me. I could have sworn I got that last one right. What did I do wrong? So these guys actually have guns. That makes them... Uh, it makes them a bit of a threat. Alright, so we're establishing a new depot. Oh my god. Oh no! We got some people who are... They appear to be down. I'm about to go down too. No! No, hounds! No! Duh. Oh! So we all died. I kind of feel like that was my fault. <laughs> Thanks to uh, that botch over at that objective. Mm. So, yeah. At least I came in second. But, you know, hey, you still get experience, you still get GP, so that's good. You don't have to worry about not earning anything. You don't earn, well, at least right now, I did not earn as much as I would have in a normal match where I can just go all the way through and get some good amount of kills and whatnot. But there you go. So before I wrap this video up, I'm just going to tell you all of the uh, different game types that we have. We have Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, Onslaught, which is what I just played, Capture the Flag, which is Capture the Flag. Kill Confirmed is kind of like Team Deathmatch, except that when you kill someone, you run over their body and you collect like these tags. And that's what gives you your points. And you can also get the tags from your fallen teammates to prevent the enemy from getting points by... Uh, collecting them uh, domination capture and hold search and destroy uh, well these are pretty all standard modes uh, there is there isn't any mode that is unique to this game except for this play as you go hello deck uh, which has tight corridors but lots of different rules so that's something that's unique to this but basically the core the core game the core modes are pretty eh, they're pretty standard you know capture the flag capture and hold you know, things that we're pretty used to right now. So yeah, that's that's Blacklight Retribution for the PlayStation 4. It's also available on PC if you rather uh, play there. Uh, but you know, this is free to play. I know a lot of people complain that, oh no, it's pay to win. But in my experience playing a little bit of the beta and playing the full game today, I really don't feel that way. I haven't come across a situation where I felt that I was at an unfair disadvantage because someone was just I just couldn't kill them because they had way too much armor or the weapon was so strong they were just killing me all in one hit I always felt like I had the ability to hold my own coming in third a lot of the time in the matches that I play so I don't really know about that pay to win argument I know that it seems like that right off the bat since you can just go right in and start buying the the more expensive and higher tiered weapons like this one instead of having to work my way up to level 40 to unlock this I can just buy this for a day for 34 or 35 zing coins or just buy it completely for 300 and because that's a level 40 weapon people might go well geez you're gonna be dominating but not necessarily because you still have to aim you still have to make sure that you get the drop on people so I really think it's play to win uh, the rental system I was against it at first, but now I'm starting to come around now that I see that it doesn't take very long to earn the necessary GP to rent the weapons. 
and you can get them for a day you get them for 30 day or uh, three days and that's a decent amount of time and you know it's I, because they're not that expensive I'm giving it a pass but yeah if you're looking for a mostly competitive first-person shooter on the PlayStation 4, which is free to play and it feels pretty darn nice and it looks pretty good too, Blacklight Retribution is something you can look into. It's going to be about 8 gigs of, the, of a download. So, that's all for now. Until next time, I'm Jeremy and I will talk to you later.